Hi, welcome to Finite Pi Videos. This is DC here. This is a new video series on PN5180 programming. So, PN5180 is a is a NFC reader writer chip from the company called NXP. So, this is what I would uh, like to cover in this video series. First, we are going to understand basics about pn5180 you're going to see how to connect this board with arduino and make sure the connection is working by using a pn5180 library which is available in github so you're going to understand various registers and how to use the registers and all the commands that are available for programming we're going to learn how to send commands and receive responses using Arduino. And I'm going to show you how to use type A, type B, and IS415693 tags, and also how to make a peer to peer communication. Now, there, is, there are not much code or tutorials available on the internet, but I'll be using uh, the library that is available in GitHub. So this is the overview of PN5180 chip. Now this is called as a multi-protocol NFC chip. If you already work with some of the earlier NFC chips like RC522 or PN532, even these also supports multiple protocols. But this particular chip supports more more protocols than the RC five two two or PN five three two. Especially, this chipset supports the ISO one five six nine three. Whereas these three protocols are more or less supported by PN five three two chip, and the first two are supported by the RC five two two chip as well. Now, one thing you know what I see in this uh, chipset is it has a very simple command set, but that doesn't mean it's very easy to use. So you can you can control every every bit of the NFC communication using this uh, registers and the command set. So it has got a very extensive control on various operations you do, and also uh, if you want to fine tune the antenna now some of these antenna fine tuning are a very much you know electronic side which I'll not be covering so I'll be covering mostly from from the, the from the developers or the the programming point of view so you'll be understanding the registers understanding you know, the memory content EEPROM so there's nothing hardware I'm going to cover. It's all about the general programming practices. If you search internet on PN532, sorry, PN5180, this is the first thing you get is this board. Now this board is a very comprehensive board. You can see here this is the, the PN5180 chip and this also comes with a, a microcontroller. So, because it has a microcontroller using this board and along with the software that comes with the board is very easier. So, however, these boards are, uh, they, they cost you know, more than uh, the one I'm going to show you now. So, you can buy this board from uh, various websites and the softwares that work with this board are also available from NXP website. So, I will not be using this board in this video series but I, what I'll be using is this one now this is the the cheaper board you can buy from internet and this looks like the RC522 board now what you can see here is just the PN5180 chip and with all these uh, additional components and the antenna 
so because there is no microcontroller on the board you have to connect this to either arduino or uh, you know any other microcontroller and using these interface lines you can send the commands or you can program the chip and what you see here is these are some of the standard pins you already seen if you have worked with rc522 now this connection is made using the spi so obviously you will come across all the spi connections like uh, miso mosi sck nss rst and there's also a busy line and the ground so some of these additional lines you know there it is there but we are not going to use in this video series this is the documentation you get about this chip from the nxp uh, website and this is a very comprehensive documentation which has got 160 pages if you start reading this probably you might have to read at least you know twice to understand you know how to use this chip so I'll be pointing out some of the sections which will be of interest so this is um, what I'll be discussing you know as I mentioned before is purely from the programming side but this documentation as uh, speaks about uh, the electronics as well as you know the additional uh, components that can be used with this step so there is one library which is available in github and if you i'm going to make this uh, url available um, in the bottom of the video so i'll be using this library and this is a library for arduino i have not tried uh, whether it works with the esp microcontroller or any other microcontrollers the first thing you have to do is you have to make the connection right so if you scroll through this uh, documentation there is a, a wire diagram it clearly shows how to connect the Arduino the board so this is the a level shifter so what I came to know is this board works with the 3.3 .3 volts whereas all the SPA signals from Arduino are 5 volts so because of that you have a level shifter from 5 to 3.3 .3. and you don't have to um, connect the level shifter for everything all the pins here because some of the pins you know the signal for example the signal that's coming uh, out of this board to the Arduino you don't need a level shifter because any signal coming out of this board it's a 3.3 .3 volts and Arduino can very well take 5 volts so only those signals that go from Arduino into this board needs a level shifter so I have already followed this uh, wiring exactly what's in this documentation and even though it didn't work for me for the first time because uh, I've never used these type of uh, level shifters before so you might come across in you know, a first time you might not find the board working so you might have missed a couple of uh, the wires basically you have, to, you have to make sure that the wires coming here when it when it this point connects to the the same signal should connect to the other end and it will pass on to the Arduino but but you know it's very easy you now I'm sure you will get this uh, entire thing working if you follow exactly what's in this uh, in this uh, schematic diagram it will work without any problem and when you this is a Arduino library and you have to know how to download this library say so if you click here you can download a zip file and this zip file has got everything to run to to test this board so if you if you see this program is running so that that means you know the your circuit the connection is right so I'm not going to tell you now how to set up this Arduino IDE and so on so just to download this uh, zip file expand it and open that in uh, Arduino IDE and that's what I'm going to show you next one thing what I would like to mention here is I was able to make this circuit working without the level shifter so the reason I did was so I have got experience working with the the RC522 and the PN532 uh, as well 
Now, if you remember, if you have worked with RC522, so the board has got only 3.3 volts. However, every blocks or every connection you see with the RC522 and the Arduino, they are all connected directly. So, because you know my knowledge of electronics is uh, is not that good, so probably now you 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 should understand why it worked. So what I did is, I have made a connection directly from Arduino to this board without using shift without using this uh, level shifter, and I saw everything works fine. But I would not, you know, I'm not a person to recommend whether whether to whether not to use this uh, lever shifter, but I will leave that to you. But one thing I would like to say is, you know, it, the whole thing works even without the lever shifter. So this is the connection I have made. Um, I've got an Arduino here. I'm going to show this uh, component by component. So I have got the Arduino board over here. And because, you know, you need uh, many 5 volts and 3.3 uh, volts on grounds. I have used a small uh, breadboard over here and I got this uh, PN5180 board. So when you buy this board from internet, you know, they, they are very cheaper to buy. You will get two tags. The, the white one here, this is the ISO15693 tag. So this must be uh, I code SLIX. You also get a key fob, which you know it's a, a Mifair classic. So, and you can see here also got. So let me bring that to the camera. You know, as you can see here, this one. So this is the level shifter, and you can buy something like this. So I initially bought this. You know, this has got eight connections. Initially, I thought I have to connect all the lines coming out of this uh, PN532 board. So however, you just need the one which has got only four um, level shifters. So everything is connected, everything is working all right. Now in my future videos, probably now I'm going to show you uh, without using these level shifters. Now here you can see my circuit diagram plus uh, the Arduino IDE. I have got this uh, library from the GitHub. I've unzipped it. I've opened the example program that is part of the library over here. If you already done some Arduino coding, so you'll you'll uh, it's easy for you to understand what's happening here. So because I have, I have followed um, the circuit diagram, which is part of the library, I don't have to make any changes to this code here. So all the pin numbers that are used is exactly you know, what I have got. Now I'm going to run this. You have to uh, compile it. You know, if you compile uh, everything, you know, from everything went on very well for the very first time. You can see that the compilation is done. I'm going to upload this to the to the board. So the upload is done and now if you just have to make a note here, I'm going to use this serial monitor from IDE, but here it's already set to 115200 as the baud rate. So I'm going to open you know, the serial monitor and as you can see here, there's so many messages are, are you know, sent to the serial monitor. So this has proved that my connection is working. So only thing if you stop this uh, auto scroll and you can see what is all happening you know in the coding so there's something like you can see there is a hard reset it's showing the version product version number it has got a firmware the interesting bit you know this has a firmware as well and the firmware version is 3.5 so you might if you remember the board i showed you before the nxp board that board allows you to update the firmware but I'm not sure you know how we are going to update the firmware in these type of uh, cheaper boards. So there's something to an EEPROM and after that this program is looking for a tag and you can see the message says uh, tag not detected. 
I'm going to use the ISO 15693 tag because this program, this sample program is written for ISO 15693 tag. So I'm going to clear this and keep this auto scrolling on. You can see that as soon as I bring this here, it's able to read uh, the entire, the memory content of this tag. The one thing I noticed about this board is the antenna, the antenna looks like the very powerful if you compare this with the RC522 or PN532. So I'm here, if you look at here, I'm almost say around, around 10 centimeters above the board. Now I'm not very sure because this is the first time I'm using the board. Maybe you know it is one of this feature of antenna being powerful. Maybe this board is maybe you know it's very popular. But so if you look at that, okay now if you try to use the one more the key tag you get with when you buy this tag so nothing happens because this program is written for ISO 15693 now one thing what you keep in mind detecting a tag uh, it's not as easy as you you have seen in the PN532 because in PN532 the firmware had a, a single command a single instruction which does the the tag polling whereas here you we have to do everything we have to program every registers in order to uh, uh, say scan in a type a or type b tags as i mentioned before this is a very very comprehensive uh, a chip and you have to program a lot in order to make things work so that's what you're going to uh, learn in this video series so in my in my next video you'll start I'll start showing you, uh, I'll start speaking about, you know, uh, some register set. But before I do that, I would advise you to read this library. Okay, so if you want to know uh, how these type of, how the, the commands are passed, and I would like, I would advise you to look at the source code of this library. This is the content of the library. The two important files you have to understand, that is, the 5180CPP and the dot H. So, plus, you know, this one, the PN5180 ISO15693. So, these two, the CPP files, are very important for, for, for us to understand. So, with this background, you can, you can start, you know, to program uh, this chip. So this is the content of uh, the 5180 CPP and if you read this code side by side with the documentation, I'm sure you'll get a lot of knowledge. This is what I did first. So because you know I've done this Arduino coding before, most of these codings are easy to understand and for every uh, instructions you see in the chip, there is a corresponding function here so you can understand you know how to how this function or how the programming works so in my future videos i will be i'll be using you know i'll be explaining or um, see how these different functions work now, the most important thing about learning this chip chipset is to understand the instructions uh, from the documentation plus you have to understand the different registers and the various uh, flags as well as the EEPROM content and also overall you know how uh, each of these instruction works and how the instructions affect the registers so there's so many things you know you have to you have to understand in this uh, chipset but so I'll try to you know make this concept uh, a simple and probably you now the the next videos of this series will be a uh, very interesting for you so you now thanks for watching so i'll be looking forward to seeing my next videos